Eddie Laura Kramers, one of the eye surgeons at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you again for joining us for the EYE Show podcast and also on our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for joining us. So I'm going to talk today about one of the things that many patients have asked us to do a video series about cataract surgery and the latest in intraocular implants. So we are in 2023 and it is still the best time in the history of the world to have cataract surgery. We have amazing technology and we're so happy that we provide pretty much all the implants in the country available here at Visionary Eye Doctors and we've had incredible success. So I want to go through how we decide when to do cataract surgery, what implant to put in, uh, how the process goes. We're going to do this over a series of videos, so please stay tuned for the next session. But today we're going to talk about implants. And when we talk about implants, we mean intraocular lens implants. And so if you've heard in my previous videos, I've shown these types of books and these types of models of what a normal eyeball looks like. And so what I generally will tell patients is the eye has a front surface called the cornea and you have the light that hits the front surface of the cornea and then goes through the pupil and then it's meant to hit the lens, which is usually clear. Uh, when we're 20 years old, the ability to kind of focus for distance, intermediate, and reading is at its best. And then as we hit the age of 40, some people a little sooner, some people a little later, the ability of that light to hit the center of the eye called the macula, where you see the world with, all the colors you see are in the macula, the ability of that light to hit right in the center decreases depending on how bad the cataract is. Uh, it also can be affected by presbyopia, the need to use reading glasses, which happens for most people around the age of 40. The issue is the following. So imagine you're kind of walking into a, a room where you want to put a light through a big keyhole in a door. And so if that keyhole is very big, the light will kind of scatter through the whole room. If the keyhole is very small, then the light will hit right to the back of the wall. And that's what the pupil does. That pupil is like your keyhole into this beautiful room. And so as I talk about this, I want to um, give a shout out to a dear friend who is re the real reason why this is happening today, because this is my dear friend uh, who has uh, a cataract and is scheduled for cataract surgery soon. Uh, he and I have become friends in college, uh, has an MD from Cornell, a JD uh, from a very prestigious uh, uh, Ivy League school and was calling with a bunch of questions regarding cataract surgery. So he has now interviewed multiple surgeons he has called me many times now we've talked about this because it's a very confusing question. What implant should he choose? What implant should you choose? And I remind him, I reminded him and remind all of you that it's still the best time to have the surgery because the options are amazing. Years ago, we had no options. Everybody got the same type of implant. It kind of looked like this plain kind of piece of what we call PMMA glass. This is actually different from that, but this is kind of a implant example. And we're gonna go through that. So now uh, we had just one choice when I was in, in uh, residency. Now we have so many options. It can make your head spin because you don't wanna make a mistake. But the beautiful thing is that very rarely do we make a mistake. Uh, Rarely does the lens even need to be explanted because somebody is unhappy, meaning taken out, very rare. Most people are very happy. So we're going to go through how we make that decision and what the implants are. So going through this again, the lens is like a pillow in a pillowcase. And so we take out the pillow, the dirty pillow, and we put in this kind of clear pillow inside, like I mentioned. And there's different types of cataracts we've talked about before. This is the most advanced type, which is kind of a very, very dark. It actually can turn black. We've seen black cataracts that are very difficult to take out. I've talked about something called femtosecond laser, which we love to do for those types of dense cataracts because it'll make the surgery safer. It'll also decrease the amount of energy we have to pump into the eye, which we think is safer for the long-term health of cells inside the eye. A lot of cataracts can look like this. The outer pillowcase is white, called a cortical cataract. There's something called a PSC, where the, the uh, posterior subcapsular cataract, where the back part of the pillowcase has kind of a scar tissue, and those patients will often need a separate laser down the line called a YAG laser that's covered by insurance, and that happens in about 30% of patients. So that's something a little down the line we'll cover in a future episode, but just to give you an overview of what we're talking about when we talk about a cataract, where it's located, and then what the implants look like. So before we get to the implants, let me just talk a little bit about how we decide what's your best implant. So when we as a surgeon sit down with a patient, we're gonna try to get to know you a bit to find out what's your potential for happiness. 
for the kind of implant we're going to put in. We're going to also address your potential for 2020 vision. Did you ever have 2020 vision? Do you want 2020 vision? Do you want 2020 vision without glasses? Do you want to wear glasses? We have a lot of patients that really cannot stand glasses and they want to take this opportunity to not have glasses for distance, intermediate, and reading. And we have some patients that want to wear glasses. So we're going to talk a little bit about that more. We also look at personality. Do you, are you the kind of person that is really into details and are going to notice every defect of the vision? It's going to drive you crazy. Uh, are you going to be happy with slight imperfections of kind of a little bit of halos around lights after the lit surgery is done? Are you going to notice a lot of foreign body sensation? Are you going to be unhappy after the cataract surgery? So we kind of look at personality. We, we kind of joke a little bit about the type A personality. I'm a type A personality, so I can joke about this, I feel. But the type A personality that's going to kind of complain about every little detail that has gone wrong. Or are you more laid back? Are you going to be able to adjust to the technology that we can provide, but just be able to kind of let your brain adjust to any irregularities in vision you might notice after the cataract surgery? So those are the first top three, three things we're looking for. For. The other thing we look for is also your profession. Are you a nighttime driver? Do you drive a do you, do you fly a plane at nighttime? Do you play golf? Do you crochet? Are you a clock watch fixer? So those kinds of things we want to know. We want to get an idea of what you're going to use your vision for. And so it's very important for you to let your surgeon know, this is what I really want out of my surgery. If you do that and you're an advocate for yourself, you'll be happier. And so will the surgeon because a happy patient is a happy surgeon, a happy world, so we want you to be happy. So those are the top few things we ask about. And then the other things the surgeon's kind of looking at is your pupil size. Are you dilating well? Are you not dilating well? What does your pupil kind of look like after we dilate you? And then the last one is price. So we always kind of assumed that we were going to provide the best care for our patients, and then price is kind of the last on our list of concerns. For patients, it's kind of the opposite. The patient might, of course, want to be super happy. They want to know what their potential for happiness is after the cataract surgery and to get 20-20 vision. But then price is a big factor, of course. So a lot of the implants we're going to talk about are not covered by insurance. There's some that are covered by insurance, some that are not covered by insurance. So we're going to go through that kind of idea of what we're going to be looking for. So for the first time in the history of the world, we have the potential to help patients be glasses free for distance, intermediate, and reading. And so those are different planes of vision. The most natural way to be able to see those different distances, of course, is when you were 20 years old and you could accommodate and your pupil and the lens would change to see those distances. But after the age of 40, that no longer really happens in a lot of patients and it decreases. When you get a cataract, it gets even worse. So the ability to see those different planes of vision are harder. So a lot of you out there are wearing either trifocals or progressives or different pairs of glasses, or you're a lucky myope, meaning your eyeball is longer than the average eye and you can just lift your glasses for reading. So if you're a myope, if you're nearsighted, if your eyeball is longer than the average eye, you gotta be sure that your surgeon is talking to you about needing reading glasses after cataract surgery because that is the norm and so if you don't tell the surgeon or the surgeon forgets to talk about it uh, believe it or not this happens and you you know wake up from cataract surgery and you realize i can't see uh, my cell phone i can't see for reading and you're really unhappy you want to be aware of that ahead of time so now most surgeons ask that question for myopes because we know how miserable a lot of nearsighted patients can be uh, because they're used to not using reading glasses. And for most nearsighted people, putting on glasses for distance is well done. They've done it for years. They've done it for, you know, 40, 50, 60 years. And then putting them on for reading glasses is a new trick for the brain that a lot of myopes don't like. So we really like to keep myopic patients, nearsighted patients, still able to see for reading without glasses. So this is what we're going to talk about. So if we talk about for patients, just the kind of idea of what's the easy way to think about this. So what we have is one column, we have the maximum quality vision. And in another column, we have the maximum needing no reading glasses or range of vision. So those are the two columns. But really, there's kind of a spectrum of implants. So let's say you want the highest quality vision. And let's say you're an engineer or you're a lawyer or you're a uh, surgeon. A lot of surgeons really choose the best quality vision. And the what we call those kind of column are the monofocal implants. So those monofocals are usually a plain piece of material, whether it's silicone, acrylic, PMMA. There's no funny things going on in that implant to cause 
the light to change as it goes into the retina. So it gives you the best quality vision. And the number one implant now that we provide is called light adjustable lens or customizable implants, which is very exciting, has changed the implant world, cataract surgery world completely because for the first time we can have patients change their mind. So we see this, we've seen this for years where a patient gets an implant and they're like, well, I really actually wanted more distance or more reading or more intermediate. And once you put normal implants in, you can't change your mind. But the light adjustable lens or customizable implant, you can change your mind. So we put the implant in, it looks just like a regular implant. You can't tell really much difference if you're looking at a patient per se under the microscope or in real life. And we have patients use their vision for two or three weeks and they're gonna come back and tell us, I am super happy or I want more reading vision or I want more intermediate vision. And so that allows us to pr provide precise implant decisions, which is very exciting. Most implants, there's about a half a diopter difference between the different types of implants we can provide in terms of power with the light adjustable, it's a quarter diopter. So for those of you that are understanding the, the math behind it, it's more precise. The second on the list is basically iHance, which is a relatively new monofocal that gives distance intermediate without any what we call aberrations of vision because it's still in the monofocal category. It's very helpful for patients that have uh, any type of retinal problems like uh, epiretinal membrane, drusen, macular degeneration, significant corneal disease, and so forth. The next on that column is Invista, which is also kind of a monofocal implant that gives you distance and intermediate, but it's not going to help with, with reading. So most of these monofocals plan on needing reading glasses. The, the light adjustable lens is probably the best of the bunch because we can kind of provide a mini monovision and we can ease patients into that mini monovision. So making the right eye or let's say the dominant eye uh, more for distance and the non-dominant eye more for reading. So that's kind of more flexible with the light adjustable. But generally, when we talk about monofocal, we're talking about distance vision. The Invista and the iHance are an exception. You can get a little bit more intermediate, but it's not perfect. A lot of people still need reading glasses for computer and reading. The last one on the list, which is the gold standard, is just general monofocal implants like the Clarion, a Acrosoft lens, and also the Technus lens. Those are just plain pieces of material, no aberrations. They work great for distance, good quality, very low risk of halos and glare. And when we say halos and glare, what we mean is that when you're outside in a light, uh, you see, let's say, headlights coming on, you see a little rim around it, or you might see a little starburst around lights. For most patients, their brain adjusts to that kind of situation because they've had cataracts for a long time. But for some patients, it's going to drive them crazy. So if you know that's going to drive you crazy, stick with the option in the monofocal uh, category. And our favorite one is the light adjustable lens in that category. On the other side of the spectrum is the best maximum range of vision, especially reading vision. And the top one for that is Panoptics. Panoptics is our favorite implant because it does provide this wow factor for a lot of patients. They'll wake up, be able to see their cell phone, reading, distance. It's wonderful. We love it. The downside is the rings that I'm going to show you that sometimes cause what's called dysphotopsias. So the rings I've mentioned also before in previous podcasts kind of look like this. So when we shine that, let's say, light into the eye or you have that flashlight going into the kind of keyhole, the light is the same number of photons are going to stay in the eye. And these rings, if we put that in front of the keyhole, let's say we put this where the, you know, the cataract is, it's going to break up the light into different parts of where the light is going to focus on the macula, in front of the macula, and so forth. So these rings are going to diffract the light and that diffraction is what causes you to see distance, intermediate, and reading with this implant. The downside is that when you look at a light, you might see these rings. And those rings, for most patients, the brain adjusts. They're very happy. Uh, but some patients are unhappy. So 1 in 300 patients want an explant because that drives them crazy. But it's rare, very rare. And it's getting even more rare because now we're able to kind of prepare patients for that risk. The second on the category, very similar to Panoptics, is called Synergy. And Synergy is kind of like a hybrid lens also. It's very good for distance, intermediate, and reading. But the dysphotopsias, this halo glare, starburst, is still a risk. So who should have the Panoptics? The patients that should have Panoptics are those patients that have a perfect cornea, have a perfect retina, and really want to be glasses-free for distance, intermediate, reading, don't do too much nighttime driving and will not be driven crazy by seeing halos around lights. If you have 
any risk of being crazy with halos around lights, don't, don't choose the panoptics. But most of our patients are very happy with the category of what's called the diffractive or trifocal implants and that kind of other category of the maximum reading, uh, no need for reading glasses range of vision. The patients that can have panoptics and synergy that we've had that are very happy are patients that have had previous LASIK or even uh, PRK, which is refractive surgery, even patients with a little bit of mild issues in the retina sometimes can be happy with the, with I would say often can be happy with the panoptics, but there's a little bit more risk. So we try to tell patients to be careful with choosing that implant. I've put in many panoptics in patients that have had LASIK and PRK and have been very happy, but we have to explain the risk carefully. So the expectations are not super high to have perfect vision because it won't be perfect. Any of these implants are not going to be the same way you were when you were 20, but we have so much technology that we can find the right one to work for you. So we have those two edges of the spectrum. And in the middle are what's called the extended depth of focus. It's kind of in the between section. So you have good quality vision, max quality to some extent, but you're taking away a little bit to get more intermediate vision. And the two that are the most commonly provided for those are called Vividi and Symphony. So Vividi is basically distance, it provides distance and intermediate vision, but you're probably going to need reading glasses. We can do what's called mini monovision or monovision, where the, I mentioned one eye is for distance, the other eye is for reading. The mini is about a half a diopter and most brains can tolerate that. So especially if you know for sure that you've had that in contact lenses and you love it and you don't mind it, then that's a wonderful option for your brain and for your vision. If you know for sure you cannot do mini monovision, which is just a half a diopter, very, very small, tell your surgeon. But most patients love this because they can have one eye for distance, one eye for reading, and it's not too big of a difference, and they're very happy. The downside of that is that you might still need reading classes. So we talk a lot about dashboard to distance because a lot of patients want to see their dashboard when they're driving and obviously distance. And that sometimes will mean you can see your cell phone, sometimes you won't. So with any of these technologies, even the best implant in the world and the best surgeon in the world, you still might not have the best outcome. So just be patient with your eyes because usually we can fix it afterwards, especially if you do the customizable light adjusted implant. But one more type of discussion about the extended depth of focus implant that I want to mention with the Vividi and also a little bit with the Synergy, which are meant for distance and intermediate. A lot of patients will need reading for those implants. The positives of those is there's really no dysphotopsia. So there's no none of this kind of ring issue that you're going to see halos and glare uh, after the implants put in, which is great. The uh, downside of those implants is basically still needing reading glasses. The pupil becomes an issue with some of these implants, like I mentioned. If the pupil is too uh, big and vividy, you may not get that perfect kind of depth of focus, so you have to be aware of that. Uh, similarly with pupil issues, if your pupil doesn't dilate well at all, we can't even do the light adjustable lens, so we are, that's one of those things we're looking at. So that's pretty much the, the punchline. So as I mentioned, we have the max range of vision, the, sorry, the max quality of vision, which of course is basically the light adjustable lens the eye hands, the Invista, and then monofocals, and then the max range of vision for reading, which is basically panoptics and synergy. And most of our patients are super happy with all these different options. Lastly, I'm going to talk about price. So price is, of course, a lot of patients' number one concern. And what we're doing when we put an implant is an, is an investment in your eye. So we know that glasses can cost somewhere between $100 to $300 a year. Uh, if you're doing progressives or certain types of special uh, kind of transition lenses, they can be even more. And that's every year, sometimes every two years or so. But if you're planning, you know, a lifetime of vision, the implant that we're putting in your eye is actually a good investment because it's going to save you usually from having to need these types of very advanced kind of glasses we put on our eyes. So just keep that in mind because these some of these technologies are not cheap. Thank you for joining us. And we're going to go through the next time a little bit more detail about the light adjustable lens. We're going to go through a little bit more detail about the panoptics, the Invista, the eye hands, and the Vividi. And we're going to get into more details about what percentage of patients are actually getting glasses free with the panoptics versus the Synergy. So please subscribe to this channel. Please pass it on to friends. I hope you found this informative. Let us know of your comments. Thank you.